When I first bought the old farmhouse, I was drawn to its isolation. It sat at the edge of a dense forest, miles from the nearest town, with nothing but trees and silence surrounding it. It was the perfect place for a fresh start, a place to get away from the noise, to slow down, and maybe even figure out who I was without the city pressing in on me. The house itself was charming in its own way, even though it needed some work. The roof was a bit saggy, the floors creaked, and the paint had long since faded, but I didn't mind. I liked the idea of fixing it up, making it mine. I even liked the overgrown fields and the way the forest seemed to loom over the back of the house like it was guarding a secret. There was just one thing I couldn't explain. The first day I moved in, I found a note taped to the front door. It was a single sheet of yellowed paper, the edges curling as if it had been there for some time. The handwriting was shaky, scrawled in thick black ink. Don't stay out after dark. They arrive when the sun sets. I stared at the note, confused and a little amused. It had to be some kind of joke, maybe from the local trying to scare the new neighbor. I crumpled it up and tossed it in the trash, not giving it a second thought. People in small towns have strange senses of humor sometimes. But that night, as the sun began to set, I noticed something strange. It was subtle at first, a kind of heaviness in the air, like the world was holding its breath. The birds that had been chirping all day went silent, the wind stopped rustling the trees, and even the distant hum of insects seemed to fade. It was as if the entire forest had suddenly gone still, waiting for something. I brushed it off his nerves. After all, moving to a place like this after years in the city was bound to feel a little strange. I made myself a cup of tea and sat by the window watching the last light of the day disappear behind the treetops. That's when I saw them. At first, they were just shadows, barely visible at the edge of the forest. I squinted, thinking it might be the play of the fading light, but the shadows didn't move like branches or leaves. They moved like people, slowly, deliberately, stepping out from between the trees. I stood up, my heart beginning to race. There were at least five or six of them, all moving toward the house, their figures blurry in the twilight. I couldn't make out any details, just dark shapes like silhouettes against the fading sky. I told myself it was just my imagination, that the isolation was getting to me. Maybe it was deer or some other animal, and my mind was playing tricks. But then they stopped. They stopped right at the edge of the field, just beyond the line where the forest met the tall grass, and they stood there, perfectly still, watching. A chill ran down my spine. I tried to rationalize it. Maybe it was hunters or locals passing through. But as the darkness deepened, the shapes didn't move. They just stood there, as if waiting for something. The memory of the note came back to me, sharp and clear. They arrive when the sun sets. I grabbed my phone, intending to call someone, anyone, but there was no signal. Typical for a place this remote, I thought, my hands shaking as I looked back out the window. The figures were closer now. They hadn't moved. Not that I had seen, but somehow they were closer to the house. The edge of the forest was farther away now, and the shadows were clearer, more defined. I still couldn't make out their faces, but I could see the shapes of their bodies, tall, unnaturally thin, with arms that seemed too long, dangling by their sides. I stumbled away from the window, my breath catching in my throat. This wasn't normal. This wasn't a joke. I ran to the front door, checking the locks, then went to every window, pulling the curtains shut. I didn't know what I was trying to block out, but I didn't want to see them anymore. The house was silent, except for the sound of my own breathing. I paced the living room, trying to calm down, telling myself it was just some weird local prank. But the feeling in the air, that heaviness, was still there. It felt like something was pressing down on the house, on me. Then came the knocking. It was soft at first, three slow knocks on the front door, just loud enough to make me freeze. I stood perfectly still, staring at the door, my heart pounding in my chest. The knock came again, three knocks, 
measured, and deliberate. I took a step towards the door, my legs shaking. Maybe it was someone who could explain what was happening. Maybe it was someone who could help. But before I reached the door, I heard it again. This time, the knocking wasn't coming from the front door. It was coming from the windows. Knock, knock, knock. First from the living room window, then from the kitchen, then the back door. The sound echoed through the house, moving from one window to the next, as if something or someone was circling the house, testing every entrance. I backed away, retreating to the center of the room, my hands trembling. I didn't dare go near the windows, but I could hear the knocking growing louder, more insistent. Whatever was outside wanted to come in. Suddenly, I remembered the note, don't stay out after dark. I wasn't outside, but it didn't seem to matter. They were here, and they weren't leaving. The knocking stopped. The silence that followed was worse. I stood in the middle of the room, straining to hear anything, my pulse roaring in my ears. I didn't know if I should move, if I should hide, or if I should run, but every instinct told me not to look out the windows. Then, from the back door, I heard something different, the sound of the door handle turning. Slowly, painfully slowly, the handle turned with a soft creak. My breath hitched in my throat as I stared at the door, paralyzed. The handle turned all the way, and then, with a quiet click, the door began to open. I didn't wait to see what came through. I ran upstairs, locking myself in the bedroom, and called the police my hands shaking so badly I could barely hold the phone. The knocking had started again, louder now, as if they were trying to break the windows. It felt like hours before the police arrived. When they did, the knocking stopped immediately. I heard the sound of car doors slamming, footsteps outside, and then a voice calling my name. I ran downstairs, flinging open the front door, desperate for some sign of safety. The police were standing on my porch, flashlights in hand, looking confused. There's no one here, one of the officers said, his brow furrowed. We searched the property. It's empty. I shook my head, pointing towards the trees. They were out there. They were knocking. They tried to get in. The officer glanced at his partner, then back at me. No one's been here. The doors are locked. The windows are secure. There's no sign of anyone trying to break in. The police left after searching the property, leaving me standing alone in the darkened house. They didn't believe me. How could they? The windows were intact, the doors locked, and there wasn't a single footprint or sign that anyone had ever been there. To them, I was just another jittery city dweller, spooked by the isolation of rural life. But I knew what I had seen, and worse, I knew what I had heard. I locked every door, pulled every curtain tight, and sat in the living room. The silence pressed in around me. My heart still raced, my mind replaying the sound of those knocks, the soft turn of the door handle. I could almost feel it again, that sense of something or someone waiting just outside, watching. I tried to sleep, but the night stretched on, every creak of the house making me jump. I kept telling myself it was over, that the police had scared off whoever or whatever had been out there, but deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that they hadn't scared anything away. They just hadn't seen it yet. Around 2 a.m., I heard the first knock. I froze. My pulse quickened, my breath catching in my throat. It wasn't a loud knock, not like before. It was softer, as if whoever or whatever was outside wasn't in any rush, like they had all the time in the world. I sat up, heart racing, but I didn't move. I didn't dare go to the window. The knock came again, louder this time. The sound echoed through the house, slow and deliberate. Then came another knock from the back door. They were circling the house again. I stumbled to my feet, my hands trembling. My phone was on the coffee table, but I knew calling the police again wouldn't help. They hadn't found anything last time, and they wouldn't find anything this time either. The knocking grew more insistent, faster, moving from one window to the next. Each knock felt like a hammer blow to my nerves, the tension winding tighter with every second. I pressed my back against the wall, my eyes darting toward the kitchen. 
The back door handle rattled, just like it had before. My mind raced. I had to do something, anything, to make it stop. I grabbed the note from the kitchen table, the one I had crumpled earlier. My eyes scanned the words again. Don't stay out after dark. They arrive when the sun sets. I hadn't been outside, but it didn't seem to matter anymore. I was already in their sights. The knocking stopped abruptly, and the silence that followed was almost worse. The air felt heavy, suffocating, like the house itself was holding its breath. I stood frozen, waiting, listening. Then I heard something. A whisper. Faint, just outside the window. I couldn't make out the words, but it was there. Just on the other side of the glass, close enough that I could almost feel it. And then the handle on the front door began to turn. I didn't think. I grabbed my keys and bolted for the back door, throwing it open and sprinting into the yard. The cold night air hit me like a wall, but I didn't stop. I ran, my feet pounding against the uneven ground, through the overgrown grass, and toward my car parked at the edge of the property. Behind me, I heard the door creak open. I didn't look back. Fumbling with my keys, I threw myself into the car, slamming the door shut behind me. My hand shook as I jammed the key into the ignition, and the engine roared to life. I glanced in the rearview mirror, expecting to see something, but the yard was empty. The house stood dark and still, like nothing had happened at all. But I knew better. The air in the car felt thick, heavy with the lingering presence of whatever had been in that house. I peeled out of the driveway, the tires skidding on the gravel, and didn't stop driving until I was miles away, until the house was nothing but a memory in the darkness. The next morning, I returned. The house looked the same, quiet, abandoned, as if it had never held any secrets. But when I stepped onto the porch, something caught my eye. There was another note taped to the front door. My hands trembled as I peeled it off, the paper worn and yellowed like the others. But this one was different. You can't outrun us. I left the house for good that day. I didn't care about the repairs, or the time, or the money I'd spent. I just wanted to get as far away as possible. But no matter where I go, I hear them now. At night, when the sun sets, I hear the knocking. Sometimes faint, sometimes louder, always closer than before. I've tried ignoring it, moving from place to place, but it doesn't matter. It follows me. And every night, I find the same note waiting. You can't outrun us. I don't know how long I can keep running, but I know one thing. Wherever I go, they'll be waiting.